Hi everyone, you're probably here because you're looking to see how big of a PSU or power supply you need for the Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs. That's the 6800, the 6800 XT, or the 6900 XT. And if you've looked around online, you may have seen several different recommendations and you may wonder if you need a power supply that large. You may also wonder if you can get by with the power supply that you already have or if you even, you know, do you even need to buy a new one in the first place? So let's get started. How big of a power supply do you need for the 6000 series graphics cards? Do you need a 1200 watt power supply? Do you need a 1500 watt power supply? No, you don't need that big of a power supply. In fact, if you're wondering why I have such big power supplies, that's a whole different story. Crypto mining is expensive in the power department. But do you need a power supply that large for your gaming rig? Do you need a power supply that large for a normal desktop computer that you're working on, doing some gaming on on the side? Likely not. First, let's take a look at what AMD says you need. For the 6800 non-XT version, AMD recommends a power supply of 650 watts or more. If you have the 6800 XT version, they recommend 750 watts or more. If you have the 6900 XT, they recommend 850 watts or more of power supply. Now that's their recommendation. They're always going to recommend something on the higher end just to make sure that everything works properly and that you don't have any issues with your graphics card. So if you already have a 650, 750, or 850 power supply in your system and you're upgrading, you're fine, probably, unless you have something else crazy in your system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But do we actually need a power supply that large? What if you purchase the 6800 XT or you're about to purchase the 6800 XT and you don't have a 750 watt power supply but you have a 600 or a 650 watt power supply? Do you need to upgrade your power supply as well? Let's take a look at some numbers to see how much power these graphics cards actually pull under load. So when you're using your graphics card to game, which is what most people use their GPU for, you're going to find that the uh, you're going to find that the power required is going to be about what AMD recommends and they should know what to recommend because they built the card. Taking a look at this chart here, you see that the standard RX 6800 pulls 233 watts when running Metro Exodus at 1440p ultra settings in a loop. The 6800 XT pulls 302 watts and the 6900 XT pulls 307 watts. Now, if you wanna overclock your hardware, you're gonna be using more wattage to do so. If you take a look at this chart here, the 6800 when overclocked pulls 247 watts. The 6800 XT overclocked is gonna pull 341 watts. And taking a look at this chart shows that the 6900 XT will pull 358 watts under full load on a gaming loop when overclocked. And, you know, this is just your average overclock. Depending on what you have in mind, you may need significantly more power. So now that we know how much power the graphics card itself is going to use, what about the other components in your system? The easiest way to determine how much your entire system needs is to run it through a power supply calculator like the one at OuterVision.com. I'll link this in the description below so you can check it out for your personal system. When you pull up the power supply calculator, you'll see that there's options to put in any desktop component or almost every component that you could possibly think of in your rig that's gonna draw power. And what I've done is went ahead and filled out all of the items that are in my rig except for the graphics card and the CPU. So I've included my RAM, I've included my SSD storage, uh, standard keyboard and mouse, and 740 millimeter fans, and one all-in-one uh, Cooler Master liquid cooler that's on my CPU, and uh, as well as two 27-inch LED monitors. Now, when I run this calculator, it says that my entire system, without the CPU and the GPU, are gonna require 120 watts, and then it recommends an extra 50 watts at 170. No matter what system configuration you put in on this site, it'll recommend an extra 50 watts on the PSU, just to account for any irregularities or differences. So now that we have a baseline system, we can add in the two most power-hungry components of the system, and that's the CPU and the GPU. So if I add a CPU such as the AMD Ryzen, such as 
the AMD Ryzen 5950, and I add in our graphics card, and I'll select the 6900 XT, and I recalculate, it's gonna give me a load wattage of 522 watts and recommend 572. If I take off the CPU just to see what the difference would be for the GPU, it's gonna recommend 426. Now, if you'll remember, I said before that the 6900 XT shows that it uses 307 watts of power in a gaming loop. If we take 426 and subtract out the 120 that it said our system needed before, that gives us 306, so it's pretty dang close. So what this tells us, this calculator is giving us accurate uh, measurements for how much this GPU is gonna impact our system. If we add back in our Ryzen 9 5950 and recalculate, it tells us we need 522 watts minimum, and it recommends a 572 watt power supply, and that sounds low. A lot of people, especially AMD, are recommending an 850 watt power supply for this graphics card. And that's, you know, that's without them knowing any other piece of hardware in your system. So with a top end CPU, the Ryzen 9 5950X, it's still only recommending 572 watts. Now, while the extra 50 watts is gonna help you kind of even out any discrepancies or irregularities with the system components, um, it's not going to account for any overclocking or any upgrades that you might perform in the future. Now on this site, there are some nifty features you can use such as uh, baking in an overclock onto your processor and onto your graphics card. And if I just put a mild overclock on both of these components, 4,500 megahertz on the CPU, on the GPU, 2,400 megahertz on the clock and 2,100 megahertz on the memory and we recalculate, we're gonna get 573, now it recommends 623 watts. So what that's telling us is that even if you have these top end components and you're planning on overclocking, 623 watts should be enough. Now, if you have a 650 watt power supply, personally, I would still be a little skeptical. I wouldn't feel comfortable with a 650 watt when there's a recommendation of 623. Plus that gives you no room in the future if you upgrade uh, and add more storage devices, maybe you add more water cooling, maybe you uh, add a higher overclock, maybe you add another monitor, whatever you add. All that's gonna do is push your power requirements even higher. So personally, if I was gonna run this system with the 6900 XT and a high-end CPU, I would wanna have at least a 750 watt power supply. And as you go down into the 6800 XT and 6800, you could probably get by with 700 and then 750. So the overall recommendation for the RX 6800 non-XT is at least 650 watts on your power supply. The 6800 XT is at least 700 watts on your power supply. And the 6900 XT, I would suggest at least 750 watts. And again, keep in mind that power supply qu quality does matter. If you pick up a cheap power supply with 750 watts, it may not perform as well or even cover your power needs. If you, on the other hand, if you have a high quality power supply, maybe it's rated 80 plus titanium or gold or whatever it is, platinum, um, and you're gonna have some guaranteed efficiency there, you're gonna be better off with a quality power supply. Another thing to note is that power supplies are more efficient on the lower end of their capacity. So if you're constantly pushing at the very high end of your power supply's capacity, it's gonna be less efficient, it can draw more power, and it could end up causing more issues down the road, even though your system fits into it on paper. So when in doubt, always go a little bigger on your power supply, don't skimp on the quality, and leave yourself some room to overclock and upgrade in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you can see more videos just like this where I talk about hardware, gaming, overclocking, whatever. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll be sure to answer it personally and maybe even make a video answering your question about it in the future. Thanks.